This is a video I've been waiting for quite a while to do and I am super excited to share it with you. I am going to be giving you my first ever veggie garden tour. It's a winter veggie garden tour, so not a lot of color, although in our Mediterranean climate in Cape Town, we do have a little bit of flexibility with what we can grow, but it's mostly greens and bushy things. But let's go take a look. Starting in the deepest, darkest little corner, we have a little coriander bed that's interplanted with some tatsoi. And the aim of this garden is to use every little bit of space that I possibly can. So you'll see it's not very big. And then there's also a whole row of marigolds, which is just a really nice defense against anything coming to attack the plants. And you can see if we look at the tatsois, they're pretty healthy compared to some of the other tatsois you'll see. And slightly shaded from, from the sun and completely shaded from the wind, the coriander is doing really well. So part of how I make use of every little bit of space I have available is pots. And I'm planting a lot of berries in the pots just because they're quite specific about their soil and they can be easily moved around depending on wind sun, rain, all of those things. So this is a red currant. And just on this side of the fence, we have blueberries, early, mid, late, spring, summer, autumn. And you can see the early ones have already started pushing out the flowers. So how I've built my garden is with cement blocks. And why I've done that is to double up on space. So here you can see we've got a bed with a trellis. Not much growing on it now because it's winter i do have some experimental beans yellow beans growing which seem to be surviving the cold but why i do this is it's a normal bed but now i can do there's a row of bronze fennel there's a row of spring onions and there's a row of kohlrabi over there and what makes this so great is sometimes you get plants that aren't the greatest of friends and if you do it this way you can grow anything you want on the outside. Fennel can sometimes be a bit tricky around other plants, but you can see they're not going to impact anything. And the spring onions, alliums. So here we have some Chinese cabbage, which I have not enjoyed growing at all. They have just been completely annihilated. If I bring you in close, you can see things just kind of live inside. And as soon as we got a little bit of heat, they've bolted. So they've been growing for a long time and they're not really doing much. So Chinese cabbage is probably something I'm not going to be growing again. Like I mentioned, row of kohlrabi around the edge. Another little potted plant. This is a chili that is surrounded by some marigolds. Then you'll see what I've tried to do with the garden is mix as many things together as possible. So here we have in the front some spinach. Underneath the broccolis, we have a whole bunch of parsnips. Root veg, leaf, they go really well together. So they don't impact each other at all. And you will you might recognize these, these broccolis over here. I did a video on these on how to get rid of white rust. And you can see that the white rust has actually stayed away. But what is absolutely majestic is the flower. These I've let go to flower just purely because we're suddenly getting a lot of bees. And these were experimental with sprays, so I'm not too keen on, on eating these. That's the beginning of a flowering broccoli there. And this is an active flowering broccoli here. It's quite early and it's super misty today, so the bees are obviously a bit sleepy. But this plant during the day is covered in bees, which for August in Cape Town, it's, it's a great source of food for them. Then what is really pretty and has been super useful for us is, is a, a row of oregonum. It's mixed. We've got some variegated oregonum. It's a really bright green, dark green, variegated. And it goes through, once again, just a nice border for pests that won't necessarily jump over. If I step back a little bit, 
you can start to see the next bed. I have a nasturtium growing up. And the idea here is to get the nasturtium growing as early as possible so that when summer comes along, I want to plant jackpie little pumpkins here. And if I can get the pumpkins intertwined with the nasturtiums, it's just gonna give it that little bit of extra protection. Here are my experimental tomatoes, which I've grown throughout summer. You can see they are still growing. There are flowers developing over there. Some of them are worse for wear, like that one, like this one. But you can see we're getting tomatoes. I will say though that the, the tomatoes aren't the rich, juicy, sweet summer tomato flavor. They're a little bit grainy which I can only assume is due to the excess of moisture and not enough heat. But they still taste like tomatoes and they are still free if you grow them. So I've been quite impressed with being able to grow tomatoes throughout the whole of winter in Cape Town. And then what I have in this arch at the moment, I don't have much growing up from a veggie perspective because the winter veggies, I don't have a lot of them that crawl. But at the top here, we do have two sweet alyssums, which are just incredible. When you walk through this arch, you just get smacked by that sweet honey smell that they give off. But at the base, you'll see on both sides, I do have some trailing peas. I've really struggled with peas this year. This is the fifth batch of peas, and they've only now just taken. So they are doing really well so yeah super happy that the peas have finally taken off and then in summer this will obviously be switched around with other things such an odd looking peach <laughs> okay and then if we go around into the rest of the bed we have we have a huge purple sprouting broccoli these things are they're massive if we look at the size of my hand they are huge so they should be sprouting in the next month or two we look down still not much happening but they are really really big and then if we look underneath what I've done is I've interplanted them with some bush bush peas and I've done that mainly as a nitrogen fixer some marigolds in between as well this bed is gonna get filled with tomatoes in summer so I've planted four rows of bush big peas just purely top and drop just to get some nutrients back into the soil and along the edge here this is why the block method works so well for me because we've got marigolds interplanted with the nero kale they're looking pretty healthy as well they make the most delicious chips i'll do a recipe on that for you so you can see how it goes Here's another chili interplanted with some, ah, the name has slipped my mind, but they're very pretty. And this little bed here has been a very disappointing bed. And um, what is working is we've got a barrier of thyme, also more of an insect repellent, but we've harvested so much of it. This was meant to be a garlic bed, but the entire back row of elephant garlic didn't germinate. Um, I think there's one that came up there and the rest just never did. So I planted some turnips there in the meantime. Here are some of the, the garlics that have taken. But yeah, all in all, quite a disappointing winter bed. That's okay. Summer is coming and uh, if I remember correctly, this is going to be filled with a whole bunch of sweet peppers. Then what we have is another row of Alliums, and these are garlic chives. Harvested a whole bunch of these as well, which is a great barrier. You can see the plants right next to them. Pretty much everything has stayed away. Haven't had issues with pests at all around these alliums. And these are our red acre cabbages. Here we have the Romanesco cauliflower, but this thing is tiny. Um, they've all been pretty small, so. Yeah, I'll just have to see what happens with those. And this is quite a nice interplanted bed. 
So like I said, we've got the red acre cabbage. There we have another row. Then we have a row of spring onions, carrots, spring onions. At the top, we have kale, red Russian kale, and then the cauliflowers. And then on that side, as another pest barrier, we've got a, a row of fennel. So you can see everything is planted with, with reason, this method behind my madness. And um, so far it's working quite well. I haven't had to spray anything over winter. Um, I did plant very carefully. And it could also be due to a, a lack of heat. But yeah, we haven't had much issues with pests at all. We're starting to get them now. We're starting to get a lot of aphids and other bugs, but that's just because it's warming up. Okay, here we have another trellis. This is quite a nice one, with the nasturtium that has now reached the roof. It's flowering, it's beautiful. And at the base, I have another attempt at peas. These are the green feast peas, which are the same as those. I had the purple potted peas, which were a complete right off. They grew, but they tasted horrible. So pull those out, pop in some green feast, which I know are super juicy and taste well. And they're now starting to sprout on both sides. And hopefully they will soon be looking like that. Okay, looking at the edge of this bed, we've got this nasturtium, which is just gorgeous. And on the edge, like I mentioned, we've got fennel and then we've got even more fennel over there. Some mint in a pot, some, some perennial basil. And then on the floor, we have some wild garlic. And if I give you an overview like this, you'll see all along the parts, along the edge of every bed, we have wild garlic planted. That's to keep the moles away. The moles are, keep trying to get into the beds. We've put something at the bottom but they keep running along the edge to try and get in. And since planting the wild garlic, we haven't had them at all. Okay, here we have a lemon tree, with some broad beans, and flipping onto the other side of the garden. This is a, got a bit of an interesting story. So you'll see these are pretty much emptied out along there. But we got raided by baboons in the week. And the boons go straight for the kohlrabi. You can see some of the kohlrabi leaves in the past, but they just sat here and had a bit of a feast. But this is also a interplanted bed. Here we have a pear tree, which is going into its third year. So hopefully it's going to do something for us. But here we have celery, cauliflower, onions, and broccoli interplanted. The onions and celery are doing really well. Broccoli and cauliflower, not so much. This is one of the prettier winter beds, I think. It's the broad, one of the broad bean beds. These beans are huge. They are probably, if I were to guesstimate, about one and a half meters tall. And with the weather warming up, they are just shooting flowers everywhere. The bees are here during the day. It just, it's amazing. And they have thick stems. Just beautiful. And on the edge, you can see some curly leaf kale. And then if I bring you into the inside, might be a bit tricky to see, but the inside here we have a row of sage. Sage is perfect for these cement blocks because they need their own watering. You can't overwater them or water them with the other plants because they'll end up just dying. So sage and like a lot of places, a row of fennel just as a really, really great barrier to keep the pests out. And you can see I'm getting some really nice bulbs that are forming. And this brings me to the next bed, which is a jam-packed bed, as you can see. In here we have purple sprouting broccoli, we have cabbage over here, red acre inside over there. You can see there's a row of carrots, there's another row of carrots in there, celery, broccoli, yeah, the, the list goes on. And all the way bordered this bed, because there's so much in it, is a nice big row of fennel. Some of the fennel has gone to flower now, and this is awesome because now we can start to collect our fennel seeds again. 
fennel seeds are amazing for cooking and the bees just freak out for these flowers they absolutely love them yeah then on to one of my favorite beds and one of the beds i'm most excited for this is the asparagus bed one of my three perennial beds so asparagus perennial comes back every year then we have a row of radishes down the middle a row of spinach which is doing really really well ended off by variegated nasturtium which just looks stunning and then a row of marigolds and then to the star of the show which is the asparagus now these asparagus are meant to go dormant in winter they haven't they have been supercharged that is massive that one and if we bring you in close we're in the beginning of august which is technically still winter look at this new spear that has come out it's pretty big and then here's two more spears that have come out that have now turned into the ferns already they are sprouting new spears everywhere which is fine for me because this is two years old which means if i look at the thickness of that spear that's come out already we're not far from, from harvesting our asparagus so from one perennial bed to the next these two beds have been densely planted in anticipation for summer what we have in here is turmeric turmeric has gone dormant already so we've interplanted that with tatsoi celery bush beans celery tatsoi and a broccoli in the corner that we've already harvested some it's busy getting some side shoots but yeah we've already harvested that and just letting it do its thing and then this has been bordered by Swiss chard all the way around and this has been grown primarily for the chickens so we try and close the loop as much as possible so all our greens for our chickens come from this bed and then as soon as the temperature is right from the middle the turmeric is going to start sprouting out and that we'll see in the summer video that's coming up once again interplanted down the middle there with some fennel as a barrier from jumping over and here we have beautiful bull's blood beetroot the whole bed is filled to the brim with beetroot they are just absolutely gorgeous and this is going to be our ginger bed the ginger turmeric and asparagus dedicated beds once they get going you'll never need to buy them again and then you might have seen in other videos compost piles i'll tag those up so you can have a look at what we've done there there's a bath so what are we doing in here recently got water chestnut seeds from living seeds i'll tag the, the post down at the bottom so you can also get some the idea is that this bed is going to get filled with water chestnuts it's warming up and you can see they already started sprouting and then just for prettiness put a row of flowers that's going to fill up over summer you're not even going to see the bath <laughs> on this side just some indigenous flowers as well just to create some prettiness around the bench picked up some wood from the dump but yeah easy easy peasy bench and then at the back we have a row of broad beans those are pretty much there just to get some root density and mass into the ground because that has been very really really poor soil with um, mostly sand and the idea is in summer this is going to be a bean wall we're going to put some more of those chicken mesh wire panels up and we'll be sitting here with a wall full of beans um, we're going to look at planting the, the Austrian kefir bean which is super exciting so that's it for the main kitchen garden which we're going to which we plant densely which is in the, our main garden I'm going to show you three extra beds that, that I've made with some of the extra space we've had and then just briefly touch on the food forest but I'll make separate videos on those because that's a that's a whole different beast yes yeah, so if we go to the next section you'll see the garden is a complete work in progress I was not joking when I said we have sand we literally have sand so I've 
once again on the border of the bed I showed you there we have marigold and more fennel <laughs> planted in the borders with no more marigolds and how beautiful is that variegated nasturtium absolutely gorgeous and then instead of planting grass we are planting wonderlawn this stuff is incredible it's soft it never needs to get mowed it's water wise it's a really really great alternative to grass okay so this bed we have more swiss chard and broad beans with a fig tree planted in as well as with the other broad beans these have started flowering but these were planted about two months after the other ones so they are quite behind and once again more fennel fennel is an absolutely amazing pest deterrent that's why i plant so much of it we also use a lot of fennel seeds in our cooking so when this all goes to seed we just have a constant supply of fennel seeds over here we have a guava this guava tree i'm going to do a video on pruning it and um, and then we've just interplanted with some onions some marigolds there's a chinese cabbage there um, and then you'll see all along the perimeter of this fence we have sweet peas which will be coming up in in summer and giving us a beautiful fragrant fence all the way around here okay then the second bed is just filled with table celery that's we've been harvesting that looking lush and gorgeous this is once again another disappointing bed we planted rutabaga and some other things that just didn't work now that's the it's the reality of gardening sometimes things work sometimes they don't i think the importance is not to hide the things that don't work show it off so didn't so what now we're planning for summer and make sure it's a success <laughs> then also in front we have a row of more swiss chard we just we can't have enough of the stuff we, we eat it all the time roast the chickens another row of celery the celery is not doing as great as the other one but there's quite a bit more shade even though it's only a meter and a half apart um, as you can see at the back sweet peas those because it's a bit of a height still need to get trailed up and there we have a tamarillo so this is going to create a beautiful structure going up along with the guava over there the tree over there so we're going to have a nice little mini food forest over here and if this one was a success it was a failure this one has been a raging success <laughs> so the, here we have a row of sweet alyssum just to bring in the pollinators and create a bit of color and this is mizuna now this is so dense we've harvested you can see we harvest quite a lot of it it's just absolutely gorgeous and then the back we've got the red red mizuna but this is it's been so lush and this is some more of uh, the pak choys i've tried to put this in the deepest shade that we have but they're still bolting i'll do i'll post a video on it so you can see okay so those are that's it in terms of the, the kitchen garden there's one other section I want to show you and while I'm walking to the section I'll, just, I'll tell you that this is where I want to do some dense planting. It's going to be a lot of beans, peas, all of those things, tomatoes, at the moment it's broad beans, so check it out. So here are two garlic beds. These garlics are struggling. These garlics are thriving. I'll do a separate video on these but I must say I've been incredibly disappointed. Um, all the garlic besides the store-bought garlic you see they've just been absolutely annihilated by rust um, and then if we look at the pink shock store-bought garlic gorgeous beautiful so i'll share my opinion on that at the later stage this is a excuse the towels in summer uh, winter in cape town is not a fun place to be trying to dry things this is just a, pretty much a space filler with sweet alyssum, broccoli, kohlrabi. I think there's a nice, there's a nice fat kohlrabi over there. 
a bed of broad beans. These were planted late in the season, so these are going to be more spring, early summer broad beans. This is a little apricot, which we're going to do. This bed gets a ridiculous amount of heat in summer, too much. So apricot, peach, which will hopefully give a little bit of shade. And then over here we have another bed, which is looking super messy. But they're cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes I've just left much like the others and they are just everywhere. It's a beautiful row. So yeah, once again, look at how they're growing. Tomatoes really can do well in, in Cape Town during winter. So this is going to become a densely planted bed in summer with, you can see, a big three meter trail, trellis is going to get planted to the max. A whole bed of parsley. We've made multiple batches of parsley pesto. Super yum. So this section here is going to become our sweet potato bed in summer. And the last bed, which is also deep shade, is tatsoi which is pretty much snail food at this stage. <laughs> it's not doing very well. Some spinach, some lettuce, strangely enough, cost lettuce, both of them, red, struggling, green, thriving. Interesting. And here we have rows of turnips and carrots interplanted with each other. Some more parsley at the end. And then we did a border of celery, which hasn't done very well. And then here is a quick glimpse at the work in progress food forest, which I'll do a separate video on. It's coming together, starting to grow nicely. Yeah, super excited about it. So, there you go. First ever garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there's some insights and knowledge shared. I hope there was some inspiration for you. And yeah, I'll be doing these once a season. So winter, spring, summer, autumn, and so forth. Just to see how the garden changes. I've got kids, so <laughs> little kids at time is not something I've got a lot of. But yeah, I want to show you how the garden progresses through the seasons. This one specifically is gonna be completely different in summer. It's going to be filled with color, fruit, everywhere. So this one I'm super excited about for summer and the spring one, I'll do a video showing you what I'm planting, why I'm planting it, where I'm planting it, all of those things. But yeah, don't miss those other ones. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. Yeah, we can all grow together. And until next time, keep safe. Happy gardening.